this isn't a conspiracy. It's a blueprint, a machine that spins forever. Enters and leaves these three shaded gates. No wires, no fuel, no noise. Howard Johnson didn't just dream it, he built it. Catch it here and see how much force it generates. And this isn't, this has been made for quite a few years. Long before the internet, before the solar boom, before clean tech became a buzzword, he dared to chase something most scientists called impossible. Enable me to understand that magnetism was caused the movement of an electron. Free electricity, not a theory, not a prototype, a working device, and then silence. His work vanished into obscure patents and grainy photos. But what if the silence wasn't a failure? It was fear, fear of what happens when power, literal power, can't be controlled. Because Howard Johnson's machines didn't just run, they threatened everything. A curious child obsessed with magnets. Long before he became a threat to the global energy empire, Howard Johnson was just a boy with a question. Why did magnets push and pull, even through solid space? What invisible force moved them? And could that force be tamed? While other kids played ball, Johnson stacked magnets, built crude motors, and tore apart clocks to find secrets. By the time he entered college, he wasn't just studying physics, he was challenging it. Magnetism wasn't just a curiosity to him, it was a key, not to wealth, but to freedom. As he matured, he grew frustrated with traditional science. Most physicists treated magnetism as a side effect, an afterthought to electricity. But Johnson saw it as something deeper, something fundamental, maybe even more primal than electricity itself. He began sketching machines, simple at first, then more elaborate. Devices where magnets didn't just hold things in place, they moved them, they powered them. People laughed, told him to work on something useful, but Johnson didn't stop, because deep inside, he felt it. If magnetism came from moving electrons, as textbooks claimed, then that movement could be directed, harvested, controlled, and if he could control it, he could power the world, cracking the code of magnetic motion. Howard Johnson's early experiments were simple, but the implications were anything but. He placed magnets in strange patterns, rotated them, flipped their polarity, added curves, coils, and gaps. What he was looking for wasn't motion caused by electricity. He wanted the opposite, a motion that caused electricity. Then, one evening, something shifted, literally. A rotor he had built began to turn on its own. No motor, no batteries, just magnets. At first, he thought it was a fluke, maybe a vibration, maybe heat expansion. But the rotor didn't stop. It spun, steady and slow, driven by the careful alignment of magnetic fields he had crafted by hand. He was witnessing something mainstream physics didn't fully explain. Magnetism, usually thought of as static, was behaving dynamically, transferring energy without wires or combustion. This wasn't magic, it was geometry, physics, intuition. Johnson wasn't defying science, he was stretching it. He spent years refining the design, taking notes by hand, sketching flux lines, and tweaking magnet angles by millimeters. Every adjustment brought him closer to a stable, continuous motion. People talk about perpetual motion like it's a myth, but Johnson wasn't trying to build a fantasy. He was building a machine, and now it was moving. The magnetic rotor that never stops. Johnson called it the magnetic rotor. It looked unremarkable, a rotating wheel lined with permanent magnets, surrounded by a fixed set of opposing magnets. But what it did was extraordinary. When aligned just right, the forces between these magnets created an imbalance, a kind of magnetic fall that caused the rotor to spin continuously. There was no motor to kick it off, no external energy input, just the quiet hum of perpetual motion or something close to it. Johnson demonstrated that by capturing the induced motion with coils placed nearby, he could generate electricity, not a trickle, enough to light bulbs, run appliances, even power an entire home. The magnets, he claimed, were doing all the work, 
converting the invisible push and pull into real, usable energy. Skeptics dismissed it, said it would eventually stop, but it didn't. He tweaked the angles and polarities for stability, and the device kept spinning. To him, the implications were obvious. With nothing but magnets and clever geometry, he could build a generator that needed no refueling, no maintenance, and no emissions. The rotor wasn't just a prototype, it was proof. Proof that free energy wasn't science fiction. It was here, in his hands, spinning quietly against the expectations of the modern world. Scaling up the permanent magnet motor. Encouraged by the rotor's performance, Johnson aimed higher. He designed something bolder, something that didn't just generate motion, but turned that motion directly into power. It was called the permanent magnet motor, and it took everything he'd learned from the rotor and supercharged it. In this device, powerful neodymium magnets lined both a stator and a central rotating shaft. The geometry was crucial. By shaping the magnetic fields just right, the shaft turned effortlessly, driven not by combustion or batteries, but by the magnets themselves. The beauty of the design was its simplicity. No moving parts other than the rotor, no brushes to wear down, no heat to dissipate. Yet when paired with copper windings, it produced a steady stream of electricity. And not just watts, kilowatts. Johnson estimated the motor could generate up to 20 kilobars of continuous power, enough for a large home or a small commercial building. It could run quietly, indefinitely, and without the need for fuel. For Johnson, this was the breakthrough that proved his earlier success wasn't a fluke. He wasn't just theorizing anymore. He was building real machines with real output. But with each step forward, the noise around him grew, not from the motors, from the people who didn't want this to exist. His final invention, the magnetic force generator. Johnson's final design was the most ambitious. He called it the magnetic force generator, a machine that pushed the principles of magnetism and motion to their absolute limit. It wasn't just a refined version of his earlier work, it was a reinvention. Inside its compact frame were arrays of rare earth magnets arranged in complex geometric patterns that defied conventional engineering logic. The goal? Maximize the imbalance of forces so that once started, the system would generate its rotational motion uninterrupted and unstoppable. What made this different wasn't just power, it was scale. Johnson claimed the magnetic force generator could output up to 50 kilometers of electricity, enough to run a small neighborhood or to function as a localized power hub in disaster zones. It was silent, emission-free, and required zero external input. But there was a problem. The more powerful his devices became, the less willing people were to believe him. The designs were so far ahead of their time that they were labeled impossible. Yet Johnson had the working models. He filed patents, took photographs, invited independent engineers to observe. And still, the silence from the scientific community was deafening. He had built the future, but the future wasn't ready. Or maybe the gatekeepers wouldn't allow it. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The suppression begins. Johnson thought the hardest part would be building the machines. He was wrong. The real battle began when he tried to bring them to the world. Patent offices stalled his applications. Reviewers rejected his filings on vague grounds. In some cases, they claimed his devices violated the laws of thermodynamics. But Johnson argued otherwise. His machines didn't create energy. They redirected it, using magnetic force in ways that weren't fully understood, but observable. Still, the resistance grew. Industry insiders stopped returning his calls. Funding offers vanished. Engineers who once praised his work distanced themselves without explanation. He began to suspect what many in the alternative energy space had feared for decades, that the suppression of radical technologies wasn't accidental. It was intentional. Energy, after all, was the most valuable commodity on Earth. Entire economies relied on people needing to plug in, fill up, or pay a monthly bill. A machine that could run forever on magnets wasn't just a breakthrough, it was a threat. And those with the most to lose had the most to gain by making sure it never saw the light of day. Johnson didn't want to believe it. 
But the silence, the delays, the ridicule, it all started to make a terrible kind of sense. Threats, intimidation, and isolation. It started with letters, anonymous, vague, and unsettling. Then came phone calls at strange hours, voices that warned him to leave it alone. Johnson brushed them off at first. He had no enemies, just machines. But the warnings escalated. Once, a storage unit holding parts of his prototype was broken into. Nothing stolen, just tampered with. Another time, his car was followed for miles by a black SUV with no plates. When he tried to report these incidents, the authorities seemed uninterested. A neighbor even told him a man had asked questions about him, posing as a journalist. Howard Johnson, a quiet engineer, found himself caught in something he didn't understand. All he had were magnets and ideas. But apparently, that was dangerous enough. He became more reclusive, moving his work to private locations. He stopped attending conferences. Interviews were canceled. Partners backed out without warning. The excitement that once drove him was slowly replaced by fatigue, by paranoia, by fear. The energy in his machines never faded. But the energy in him did. Johnson was a man who wanted to give the world something incredible. And instead, the world closed in on him. Not with open debate, but with whispers, shadows, and silence. The man behind the machines. Howard Johnson wasn't a showman. He didn't crave the spotlight. He wasn't rich, didn't wear suits, and didn't have a PR team. What he had was curiosity and a workbench full of magnets. Friends described him as soft-spoken, humble, relentless. He wasn't in it for fame. He wanted to solve a problem he believed no one else was truly addressing. How to generate power without taking from the earth. His notebooks were filled with ideas, some wild, some brilliant, all handwritten in careful block letters. He documented everything, not to prove people wrong, but to make it reproducible, to invite collaboration. He opened his home to fellow inventors, shared plans, demonstrated his devices, but he never built a company, never launched a product. Because every time he tried, another obstacle arose. Investors demanded he make compromises. Universities laughed him out of the room. Reporters stopped showing up. Still, he kept building right up to the end. The public never really saw Howard Johnson. They saw glimpses, mentions in obscure magazines, fragments of interviews. But the man himself stayed mostly hidden because every time he stepped forward, something pushed him back. Not science, not failure, but something colder, something that feared what his silence could make too loud to ignore. Legacy in the shadows. When Howard Johnson passed away, most of his machines were dismantled. Some parts were boxed up and stored. Others vanished entirely. No press conference, no tribute, just silence. But silence doesn't erase a legacy. Slowly, tinkerers and independent engineers began revisiting his work. His patents, once buried under skepticism, resurfaced on forums and YouTube channels. Young inventors built their magnetic rotors using Johnson's designs and watched them spin. They weren't always efficient. Some failed, but others worked, roughly, inconsistently, but undeniably. And that was enough. Because if one machine worked, even once, then the door wasn't closed. It was just locked. And Johnson had left the key. His name began circulating again, not in labs or boardrooms, but in garages, basements, and hackathons. People started to ask, what if he was right? What if we stopped laughing and started listening? His ideas weren't polished. His devices weren't commercial grade, but they sparked something. A new generation of creators, not bound by oil, wires, or convention, began to see in Johnson what his peers never could, a map to a future powered not by scarcity, but by force, magnetic force. And the silence that once buried him became the very thing that amplified his voice. A future that could have been, and might still be. What if we had listened? What if Howard Johnson's machines had been embraced instead of dismissed? We might live in a world powered not by burning fuel or splitting atoms, but by magnets, silent, clean, and endless. Imagine a home with no electric bill, a village lit by a humming motor hidden in a shed, a planet that no longer coughs from pollution just to keep the lights on. His vision wasn't science fiction, it was a design problem. 
and he came close, closer than anyone wanted to admit. Today, we have stronger materials, faster computers, and better tools. We can simulate, optimize, and 3D print designs that Johnson built by hand. His work isn't just a relic, it's a foundation. The world is different now. Climate threats are real. Power is political. But somewhere in a box of forgotten blueprints or a replica spinning in someone's garage, the solution might still exist. It's not too late. The future Johnson imagined, a world of free-flowing, decentralized energy, is still possible. But only if we stop asking if it can be done. And start asking, why did we stop trying? Howard Johnson's machines didn't roar. They whispered. In a world addicted to noise, his quiet devices were easy to overlook. But maybe that's the point. The future doesn't always arrive with fanfare. Sometimes it hums in a garage, spins in secret, fights uphill battles and still turns on. His story isn't over. Not if we're willing to listen. Not if we believe that power should be clean, free, and shared. Howard Johnson tried to show us that. And though they tried to silence him, his machines are still spinning. In mines, in workshops, in the places no one thought to look. Until now.